and started clapping Sean's cheeks. He was pounding away and was enjoying every moment of it. Sean was jailed for 40 years. He left the courtroom in tears crying while waving goodbye to his friends and family. He thought he would have been found not guilty but instead the judge gave him 40 years in prison which might as well be a life sentence. One of Sean's greatest fears was getting a sentence this high because he had dreams of being a millionaire and having a family but a sentence this long would crush all of Sean's hopes and dreams. Once Sean entered the prison he was moved on to a small induction wing. An induction wing is a wing inmates who have never been to that specific prison go to before being moved on to their permanent wing. Sean loved the induction wing because it was quiet and all the inmates got on fine. After spending a few weeks on the induction wing Sean's confidence grew even more so he thought prison was easy. He said to himself prison is a joke. Prison is a piece of cake. On his induction wing there were no fights or inmates getting their cheeks busted open so Sean thought prison was easy. This was great news for Sean because it made the days go faster. The only issue was that the induction wing gave Sean a false perception of prison which made him believe all the other wings must be like this one until one day everything changed. One day after Sean came back from breakfast a guard opened his cell door and said Sean today is your lucky day, you have been selected to move on to the most prestigious wing in this entire prison. Today we are moving you on to the Royal Wing. Sean then replied saying the Royal Wing. What's the Royal Wing? The guard then said only the chosen few are allowed to live on the Royal Wing and you have been chosen so pack your bags right now and I'll be back in 10 minutes to collect you. Sean felt excited and honored because he had been selected to live on this royal wing. He really enjoyed staying on the induction wing and also made friends too but the royal wing sounded much better so by the time the guard came back Sean was all packed and ready to go to this new wing. Sean said his goodbyes to the other inmates on the induction wing and walked with the guard through the prison to the royal wing. Sean had the biggest smile on his face and was so excited to check out his new wing. While walking through the prison grounds Sean could hear the shouting and screams of other inmates on other wings. He then thought to himself I'm so happy I'm not being moved on to any of those other wings because they sound dangerous. After 10 minutes of walking through the prison grounds the guard and Sean finally made it to the entrance of the royal wing. The guard took out his key and opened the door. Once Sean stepped inside the royal wing he looked around and was totally amazed by what he saw. The royal wing had huge flat screen TVs everywhere along with computer game systems table tennis and pool tables. It also had free vending machines which inmates could use to get free snacks and free drinks which was topped up every single day. The royal wing truly lived up to the hype because it also had a huge hot tub and multiple massage chairs which inmates could use whenever they wanted. These were only some of the things the royal wing had to offer but it had much much more. Sean was so impressed and just couldn't believe all this was on one prison wing. The best part of the royal wing was the fact that it was very clean and well maintained. Sean noticed the royal wing was very quiet but also wondered why all the inmates were in their cells. He also noticed all the cell doors were closed but not locked so he thought to himself, where is everyone? Why are there no inmates outside playing pool or using the hot tub? 
He thought to himself this is strange but then just assumed the inmates were all probably just in their cells sleeping. The guard then told Sean wait here a second as he walked over to a cell and opened the cell door. A few moments later an old man walked out of the cell with a big smile on his face greeting Sean and said, Sean we have been expecting you, welcome to the royal wing. The old man said to the guard I will take it from here so the guard then left the wing and headed back to the induction wing. The old man said to Sean, I am the leader of the royal wing and my name is white man Dan. If you have any questions during your stay on the royal wing my cell is right there. Come and visit and we can talk about anything you want. Sean then said thank you. White man Dan was in his 80s and had been in prison for the last 30 years. He was the supreme ruler of the royal wing. His word was the law. His word was final. White man Dan was not a big guy at all. In fact he was only 5 foot 2 with a slim build but he ruled the royal wing with an iron fist. He also had a strong army of men willing to listen to his every word. They were willing to do anything he said without question. Sean thanked white man Dan for choosing him to be on the royal wing as he was very grateful for the opportunity. A few moments later all of the other inmates came out of their cells so Sean could now see everyone on the wing. While he was talking to white man Dan he noticed something very strange about the other inmates on the royal wing. All the inmates who came out of their cells looked like women and before he could say anything one of the women came over and kissed white man Dan. White man Dan then said Sean meet my prison wife, her name is Stacy. Sean was in total shock as his jaw hit the floor, he had never seen anything like this before, he always thought these sorts of things only happened in movies but he also didn't want to make a scene because they just may decide to kick him off the wing so he greeted Stacy by saying it's lovely to meet you. Sean also noticed Stacy and all the other inmates apart from white man Dan all had long blonde or brunette hair. Their fingernails and toenails were painted in either red or white nail paint. They were also all wearing booty shorts with belly tops on. The only people who were dressed like men were white man Dan Sean and the prison guards but everyone else was dressed like a woman. Sean then thought to himself, are these really men on this wing and if they are real women what are they doing in a men's prison? He just couldn't tell because they all looked like very attractive women. At this point white man Dan kept on talking but Sean wasn't listening to a word he was saying because he was too focused on trying to figure out if these were men or real women on the wing. He also thought to himself where are all the real men on this wing and that's when white man Dan said, I'm going to go and do some work now so I'm going to leave you with Stacy. She will give you all the training you need for the royal wing. White man Dan then smiled at Sean as he walked off. Stacy was the longest serving woman on the wing and had trained all the other girls so Sean was in great company. Stacy escorted Sean into her cell which she shared with white man Dan. Sean was still in shock by what was going on but just followed Stacy back to her cell anyway. Once in the cell Stacy gave Sean a see-through plastic bag which was full of items. Sean looked in the bag and could see exactly what was inside of it. He could see things like blonde wigs, makeup and lipstick, booty shorts and more. Basically it was a bag full of things a woman would wear and that's when Sean just had enough and said, Stacy I know you mean well but I think there has been a mistake. 
You have handed me a bag full of women's items but I am a man plus I'm not gay so I don't need this type of stuff. I think I'm going to have a word with white man Dan to have me moved off this wing because I don't belong here and that's when Sean rushed out of the cell. Stacy shouted at Sean saying wait come back but Sean didn't listen and just stormed off. He could see white man Dan in the hot tub having the time of his life so he rushed over and then said white man Dan I know your plan and I know what's going on here but I don't belong here. I don't belong on this wing. I'm a man and I don't want to be converted into a woman like all the others on the wing. I want to be moved on to another wing. White man Dan stayed silent for a second. He then looked at the clock on the wall with a smile on his face and then counted 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The entrance door to the royal wing suddenly opened. A large army of about 60 men stormed onto the wing and were all greeted by the women on the wing. Sean now realized that these women on the wing were the men's prison wives. The men were all white with big muscles. The men were all returning back home from a hard day's work. Sean now started to realize what was going on. All the men on the wing go to work and all the women stay at home on the wing. He then thought to himself. White man Dan wants me to be a woman of the wing so that means I will have to have a husband too but before he could say another word white man Dan called three of the huge men over and said to them meet Sean. He is our latest recruit who thinks he doesn't belong on this wing. The three men then started laughing. White man Dan then said Sean you better take that bass out of your voice when you are talking to me because I don't know who you think you are talking to. I am white man Dan and I am the supreme ruler of the royal wing and that's when white man Dan increased his volume as he spoke even louder so the entire wing could hear him. He then said in a loud angry voice, everyone listen to me. This girl Sean thinks we have made a mistake. She thinks she was sent to this wing by accident. She thinks she is on the wrong wing and that's when white man Dan's henchman grabbed Sean and boxed him in the face. Sean was hit so hard he felt like his face was broken. He fell to the floor so hard he couldn't even get back up. White man Dan then came out of the hot tub and then walked over to Sean. He whispered into Sean's ear saying, Women I run this entire wing and I make no mistakes. You are going to be a woman of the wing whether you like it or not and you ain't going nowhere. White man Dan then smiled and got back into the hot tub to relax. He then ordered his henchman to throw Sean back into the cell with Stacy to continue his training which they did. White man Dan also said to his henchman if the new girl Sean doesn't listen just send her to the purgatory wing. His henchman then said yes sir. While in the cell Stacy could see Sean had two black eyes. The henchman boxed him hard. Stacy then said to Sean I warned you, I told you to come back, you have to listen to white man Dan, he runs this entire wing, whatever he says goes and that's it, Sean then said I'm not supposed to be here, I mean I can understand why you and the rest of the women are here because you are all gay but why am I here, I like women not men. Stacy then laughed and said gay, you actually think I'm gay? Sean replied yes, I saw you kiss white man Dan when I first met you plus you are wearing women's clothes and have your fingers and toes painted in white nail polish. You also have a blonde wig on your head so that makes you gay. Stacy then replied saying, I am not gay. 
I do this not because I want to but because I have to. In fact none of the women on this wing are gay. We have to do this because if we don't, white man Dan will send us to the purgatory wing. Sean replied saying I heard white man Dan mentioning this wing but what is it? Stacy then said purgatory is the worst place on earth. Inmates are chained to beds and rented out 12 hours a day to other inmates and prison guards. That's where all the men from the Royal Wing go to work as security guards. White man Dan rents out all the male inmates who he converts into women on purgatory. Inmates from other wings also pay money to use the services on purgatory too. They get their thrills and then go back to their own wings. Purgatory is a one-stop shop for all the fun you need. Even the prison guards have their fun too as most of them can't get anything from their wives at home so they use the inmates on purgatory to live out their darkest fantasies. Stacy then said let me finish training you because white man Dan is planning to introduce you to your husband later. Sean then replied saying, husband. Stacy then said yes, husband. The training is to teach you how to be a submissive wife which means you must never talk back to your husband. You must make him tuna and noodles when he comes home from work because the men love a cooked meal as soon as they get back. Stacy continued to say you must wash your husband's clothes, iron his clothes, make him coffee and smile. Another thing you must do and which is the worst part about being a prison wife is the fact that you need to make sure his balls are always drained. Yes. You must make him clap your cheeks whenever he wants to do it. Sean then said what? Stacy replied saying yes. Your husband can clap your cheeks when he feels like it. Even if you are tired. Stacy then said if we don't follow the rules white man Dan will have you sent to purgatory which is where you get your cheeks clapped by multiple. Different men 12 hours a day 7 days a week. Stacy continued and said I would rather just get my cheeks clapped by one man rather than getting my cheeks clapped by multiple random men on purgatory because at least on this wing we have loads of luxuries which they don't have on other wings so let's just get you trained up to keep white man Dan happy. Sean then asked Stacy why is there only white people on this wing because the induction wing mostly had black guys on it. Stacy then said it's because white man Dan thinks white people shouldn't mix with other races. He also thinks white people are the superior race so we shouldn't mix with other races. He also says he wants to keep our race clean and pure so only white people are allowed on the royal wing. Sean was shocked because he grew up in a mixed area and never saw race as an issue. His entire social circle was mixed. Sean was getting hungry so they both had dinner in the canteen. When they got back they talked for another hour. White man Dan then returned to the cell and saw Sean sitting on the bed. White man Dan now had a massive smile on his face. Stacy then said to white man Dan, Husband I have completed all the training and she is ready to be introduced to her prison husband. Her new name is Shauna. White man Dan looked at Sean and said she looks perfect. Sean now had on a blonde wig, makeup, red lipstick, booty shorts, a belly top and some women's flip flops. White man Dan then shouted on the wing saying, Peter come to my cell now. A few moments later Stacy's cell door opened and a 6 foot 2 giant named Peter walked into the cell. White man Dan then said Peter meet your new prison wife Shauna. Take her back to your cell and have the time of your life with her. 
Peter grabbed Sean and walked back into his cell with Sean. Once they got into the cell Peter threw Sean onto the bed and said I'm roasting so take off your booty shorts right now woman because I'm about to take you to pound town. Sean agreed to be a prison wife but he didn't want to get his cheeks blown out. He just wanted to do his prison time in peace without having to be a woman. Sean then said to Peter I have a headache so can we do this tomorrow instead. Peter said I'm roasting but I'll wait for your cheeks tomorrow so I'll just take your mouth right now. Sean was so scared and didn't know what to do. Peter was much stronger than Sean so Sean knew Peter could just take it if he really wanted to so he just gave in and agreed to just suck Peter's tings. Sean walked up to Peter and got on his knees. Peter pulled out his tings and Sean started sucking it. Peter said to Sean you're a natural because this feels so good. Sean continued to suck Peter's tings for 10 minutes until Peter busted the biggest cream pie all inside of Sean's mouth and all over Sean's face. Peter now felt so tired so he jumped into his bed and within 10 seconds he was sleeping like a baby. Feeling humiliated Sean couldn't believe he had just sucked a man's tings in prison. He went over to the sink and washed the cream pie off his face while tears fell from his eyes. Sean also noticed the cell only had one bed but Sean didn't want to share a bed with a man so he just slept on the floor. He was so ashamed of what he had just done and cried himself to sleep. The next day Sean woke up and looked over on the bed to see if Peter was there but he had gone to work. Stacy came into his cell and said I heard about what you did last night. Sean said what? Stacy then told Sean that Peter told the entire wing what you done before he went to work. He said you were a natural. Sean now felt even more embarrassed by what he had done and said I had no choice but to do it. He's much bigger and stronger than me and would have just took it anyway so I had no choice but to just suck his tings. It was either that or let him clap my cheeks and I just can't let anyone do that. Stacy then said at some point you will have to let him clap your cheeks. I hate doing it myself but I have no choice. It's either I let white man Dan clap my cheeks or I get sent to purgatory and get forced into doing things with random men from other wings all for free because white man Dan makes all the money from the sales. That's how he can afford to pay the men on this wing. They are all security for purgatory. They make sure all the buyers are paying. Sean then said why don't the guards help us. Stacy replied and laughed while saying white man Dan pays them too so they are in on everything. Why do you think you were brought to the royal wing in the first place? When you entered the prison your picture was taken which the guards then show to the men on the royal wing and Peter selected you as his prison wife. His old wife was talking back too much and wasn't listening to him so he just replaced her with you. Sean then asked Stacy where Peter's old wife was now. Stacy looked on the ground and said to Sean where do you think? She's now on purgatory getting her cheeks blown out by random guys. Once you go to purgatory you can never come back to the royal wing. Sean then asked why not. Stacy replied saying if you get sent to purgatory you are considered used goods. No man wants a woman who loads of men have been with. A woman like that is no longer a wife and belongs to the streets. Stacy then said I need to do some cleaning now and prepare the cells. I have to go now but remember to make Peter noodles and tuna along with a coffee as soon as he comes home from work. 
Stacy then left the cell and went to do her duties. Sean then sat on the bed crying thinking to himself I can't believe I sucked a man's tings last night. That was the worst experience in my life which I will never do again and that's when Sean got angry and said I'm not listening to that little dwarf white man Dan anymore and that's when he took off the booty shorts, belly top, removed the wig, removed the nail paint, washed off the makeup and became a man again. He now vowed to stand up for himself. He promised himself he would never suck a man's tings ever again. He then stormed into white man Dan's cell and said no more, no more will I be a prison wife. White man Dan looked at the clock and saw the men wouldn't be back for another 10 hours. White man Dan knew he wasn't a fighter so he agreed for Sean to be a man again. He then said to Sean you were right. I have made a big mistake Sean, it was wrong for me to make you become a prison wife. He then said walk with me, while they were both walking white man Dan said we're going to move you out of Peter's cell right now and into your own cell. He then proceeded to say please forgive me Sean you are a man and you deserve respect. Sean was happy white man Dan finally let him not be a woman and moved into another cell. White man Dan even helped him move into his new cell and started being really nice to him. He also told Sean since you are a man now you will have to go to work with the rest of the guys. You will have to earn your keep. Sean accepted as he didn't mind working to pay his way. White man Dan shook Sean's hand and went back into his cell. Sean was now happy that he doesn't have to be a woman anymore so he spent the rest of the day enjoying what the Royal Wing had to offer. He watched TV, played pool and even spent an hour in the hot tub. Later on that day Stacy came over to Sean's cell and told him not to trust white man Dan. Sean replied and said Stacy I know you are concerned but you have nothing to worry about. Me and white man Dan have an understanding. I am now a man again and I am going to work with the guys tomorrow. Stacy then told Sean to just be a prison wife because it's not that bad when you get used to it. Sean then told Stacy to get out of his cell while saying you are just jealous of me. You are jealous because white man Dan has allowed me to be a man again and not you. Sean then shut his cell door, sat on his bed and watched TV. The next day Sean woke up and met all the guys on the landing ready to walk to purgatory for work. Sean was so happy he was a man again he said hello to the other guys but they all blanked him. White man Dan led the way as they all walked to the purgatory wing for work. The walk took 10 minutes to get to purgatory. All the men spoke amongst each other but no one spoke to Sean along the way. Sean could see Peter amongst the men but Peter also didn't talk to him either. Once the men all got to purgatory white man Dan opened the door. Sean could not believe what he saw through that door. Purgatory was a real life horror movie. There was blood all over the walls. Cream pie stains on the floor and walls and it was everywhere. Graffiti was all over the walls. He could also hear the sounds of men screaming for help while also hearing the sounds of beds squeaking and loud booty clapping sounds. Purgatory was a living nightmare. Sean could hear inmates screaming as they were getting their cheeks blown out. White man Dan then walked over to Sean and said, Welcome to your new home woman and that's when Peter and two other guys grabbed Sean and dragged him into a spare cell on purgatory. Two guards also came into the cell and handcuffed Sean's hands to the metal bed frame so he couldn't escape. 
Sean begged white man Dan to please let him go but white man Dan just laughed. White man Dan then said did you really think I would let a woman like you go? This wing is going to be your new home and you will never ever leave. You are going to make me millions and I'm going to enjoy renting you out to other inmates and guess what? Your first customer is going to be your ex-prison husband Peter. That night he was roasting and you didn't give up your cheeks to him so he will be getting it now. Sean then looked at Peter who had a fat smile on his face. Sean begged Peter to just let him go. He begged white man Dan to let him back onto the royal wing as he promised to be a submissive wife like the other women on the wing. White man Dan just laughed and said no, your new home is on this wing now. White man Dan gathered the rest of the guys minus Peter and left the cell. Peter then closed the door and jumped on the bed. He then ripped off everything Sean had on and said I'm going to love this. Sean tried to kick him off but Peter was just too strong. Both of Sean's arms were also handcuffed to the bed frame so it was extra easy for Peter to take Sean's cheeks. Peter boxed him in the face and then continued to box him for a further five times until Sean was knocked out. Sean was on his back on the bed with his feet in the air and he was knocked out cold. Peter then slid his tings inside of Sean and started clapping Sean's cheeks. He was pounding away and was enjoying every moment of it. He continued to pound Sean's cheeks for a further five minutes but while Peter was clapping Sean's cheeks Sean woke up. He could now feel Peter inside of him pounding away. He could also hear the screams of other inmates on the wing as they were all getting pounded out. Sean felt like he was in a living nightmare as Peter continued to pound his cheeks until he started to feel the nice sensation and that's when Peter busted a massive load of warm cream pie inside of Sean. Peter then kissed Sean on the forehead and walked out the cell with the biggest smile on his face. Sean had now had his cheeks taken in prison and was wounded. He was in so much pain but it still wasn't over. In fact the day had only just begun because outside of Sean's new cell on purgatory was a line of 200 inmates waiting to have a turn on Sean. The line was so long it went out of the purgatory entrance doors and onto the prison grounds. After Peter left the cell another inmate walked in the cell who was six feet tall with a massive smile on his face. Sean could also hear other inmates outside of the cell saying to each other I can't wait for my turn. The inmate who was in the cell walked closer to Sean but Sean shouted saying leave me alone, stay away from me but the guy didn't listen and walked even closer until he got to the bed. The guy then told Sean you are going to give it up woman and that's when he boxed Sean. Unable to defend himself Sean just laid on his back with his feet in the air and just took the pounding from the inmate. The inmate was clapping Sean's cheeks saying take it, take it woman. As Sean was getting his cheeks clapped he just laid on the bed crying while thinking to himself I can't believe I just got turned out in prison.